Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command, Newport, arriving. Commander, Naval Service Force, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Butts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you have fashioned and created us as a people and called us as a nation to a place of trust and leadership in the world. We honor this day our newest naval officers, and we ask for your special blessing upon them as they embark on their journey into the fleet. Father, today our hearts rejoice in the day these graduates have dreamed of has finally arrived. So many are proud of their achievements. However, we are mindful that our achievements are possible only through the life you have given us, through the parents who have loved and nourished us, through the host of peers and friends along life's way who encouraged us, and those here at Officer Training Command who guided and molded each life, developing them into our nation's newest naval leaders. No one person is an island, and none are perfect, and each is a witness to your watchful care and forgiving grace. With every accomplishment and privilege came added responsibility, and each one of these officers stands here today accepting of the duty that our nation has entrusted to them. Bless all who've stood by these we honor and give them an extra portion of your love. Watch over and protect them as they head off to their new commands. Today they stand on the shoulders of the greatest naval leaders of history who've inspired generations to fight for the freedoms that make our country great. Give them the strength and courage to carry on that legacy. Be with us today and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mark Hazenberg, Officer Training Command, Newport. Distinguished guests, OTC and staff, family members and friends who are joining us both in person and virtually, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of Class 01 TAC 22. Good morning. Good morning sir. I am excited to welcome 70 newest ensigns into one of the most prestigious, challenging, and rewarding careers in our nation, that of a naval officer. To family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you have done preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Thank you for the support you have given them. It has enabled them to make the sound choices they have made, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. We are grateful to you for your continued support. To the graduates, as commanding officer of Officer Training Command, I am proud of all of you. You all had many other options in volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I can assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was handed to you these past 13 weeks except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. And you seized that opportunity. You embraced it, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for that significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, to lead sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world and around the clock. Know that you are going to be doing significant and meaningful work for our country. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership and its strict adherence to the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. I urge you to continue to uphold the highest standards of excellence and integrity. Character matters. As writer George Eliot once said, character is destiny. Your choices in life will determine where you end up. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country your best efforts because nothing else will suffice. In closing, I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. Each of you are about to embark upon a great adventure, an adventure in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had or will ever have. And regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life in which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is my honor and privilege this morning to introduce to you our guest speaker, Vice Admiral Roy Kitchener, Commander, Naval Surface Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet. A native of Trumbull, Connecticut, he is a graduate of Unity College with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and earned his commission through the Navy's Officer Candidate School in 1985. He also attended the Naval Postgraduate School where he specialized in Western Hemisphere Studies and earned a Master's of Arts in National Security Affairs. As a surface warfare officer, he has had numerous at-sea duty, deployed around the world, and commanded the USS John Paul Jones, the USS Higgins, and USS Princeton, and Expeditionary Strike Group II. Vice Admiral Kitchener has served on numerous shore-based staffs and most recently served as Commander Naval Surface Forces U.S. Atlantic Fleet. Vice Admiral Kitchener assumed the duties as Commander Naval Surface Forces uh, Pacific Fleet on August 3rd, 2020. His leadership is absolutely essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are truly fortunate to have him here with us today to share some thoughts with the Navy's 70 newest ensigns. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Vice Admiral Roy Kitchener. Well, thanks, Captain Hazenberg. And Good morning, Officer Training Command, staff, veterans, family, friends, and soon-to-be ensigns. Good morning, sir. First, 
I'd like to recognize the class officers, class chief petty officers, academics instructors, and drill instructors. Your collective guidance and mentorship is paramount to the professional development of thousands of candidates who come through these doors each day. Thank you for your commitment to excellence. How about a round of applause for all that support of them? And how about a round of applause for these officer candidates? It's always an honor for me to speak at these commissioning ceremonies, but on this occasion, I take great personal interest in the message I bring to all of you today. I recognize as time passes in your lives and careers, the words that I offer will fade, but the underpinned value of today's message should resonate with all of you in this room today. As you set out on what will be probably the most professionally challenging, personally rewarding, and ever more critical to the security of our shared American values. You see, 36 years ago, I stood in your shoes as an officer candidate, having completed 12 challenging weeks of training. I confirmed that when I talked to one of your road guards out there. He was ready to sit in your seat today. Like many of you, I was eager for challenge and excited to offer my utmost in return. Like all of you, I was not entirely sure of what really lie ahead of me. I can tell you that I have experienced and endured far more than I ever expected. OCS, Officer Candidate School, set me on an exciting and rewarding path, having instilled in me many of the professional character traits demanded by our service. The lessons I learned here were critical to the success of the sailors I've had the privilege and the responsibility of leading throughout my career, many of whom themselves pursued commission through this program. Leadership, it's why all of you are here and why all of you signed up for this crucible. It is the most rewarding and exa exasperating aspect of our work. But leading sailors is what we do. Embrace this opportunity. Recall and apply the lessons we've learned that, that you've learned throughout your life and over the last 12 weeks. Believe in your ability. Be flexible in adaptation and continue to learn regardless of your rank or position. Trust me, I learn something new every day. As Naval officers, it doesn't matter where you came from or how you grew up, and even less your commissioning source. What does matter is that the moment you take the oath, the weight of commission is not only immense, but it is binding. You will be expected to execute the responsibilities and authorities of this commission during the best of times, and more importantly, during the worst of times. Remember, mission first, sailors always. Regardless of the community to which you are about to enter, you must master your craft and consistently work to have an innate understanding of our Navy and its mission. Every one of us, every one of us, play a role in supporting and accomplishing the mission. And you, all of you, are responsible for connecting our sailors to that mission and motivating others to action in support of it. The Navy I joined is dramatically different than the one I serve in today. Quite frankly, today it's a much better Navy. And each of you are expected to drive change as we develop new technologies and tactics, expand into new operational theaters, and professionalize our Navy at a pace not experienced in decades. We employ revolutionary war fighting systems. We are developing new ships and aircraft designed to counter evolving threats and deliver decisive combat power swiftly and precisely wherever and whenever we choose. But make no mistake, 
these systems are unserviceable without competent, dedicated, and strong leaders at the helm. This next generation of leaders stands in front of me today. You must learn to employ these tools in a fight we cannot lose, all the while creating calmness from the chaos of battle to enable our decisive advantage, which is the sailors that you will lead. Yet you must also be a compassionate and a strategic leader, a leader who understands how to measure tactical risk and when circumstances dictate, restrain these deadly capabilities, we entrust to your ability. Admiral Arleigh Burke said in 1961, in this modern world, the instruments of warfare are not solely for waging war. Far more importantly, they are the means for controlling peace. Naval officers must therefore understand not only how to fight a war, but how to use the tremendous power which they operate to sustain a world of liberty and justice without unleashing the powerful instruments of destruction and chaos that they have at their command. These words spoken 60 years ago ring truer today than ever before. Be strong, be steady, be humble. In closing, and speaking from personal experience, it's doubtful that you will remember anything I said today. But remember these words from Admiral Halsey. There are no extraordinary people, just extraordinary circumstances that ordinary people are forced to deal with. It's up to all of you to be bold enough to use those extraordinary circumstances to bring about the extraordinary talent in those you lead, and to find victory in the trials you will all face together. Finally, every organization these days and throughout history has kind of a cool and meaningful Latin phrase. For all of you officer candidates, I offer non ducor duco. I am not led, I lead. Good luck and God bless. Before we all embark on some well-deserved leave and liberty following this ceremony, it is my honor and my pleasure to now lead you in the oath of office as you begin or continue your service in the world's most powerful Navy. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention. Class 01-TAC-2-2, Class 01-TAC-2-2, raise your right hand. I state your name. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, do hereby accept such appointment, and do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I take this obligation freely, without mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and well and faithfully discharge, the of the discharge the duties of the office I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. Ensign Butel has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG-93 Chung Hoon in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii.
Ensign Butel is a graduate of Virginia Commonwealth University. Ensign Sturpey has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Sturpey is a graduate of the State University of New York at Brockport. Ensign Alamar Alonzo has been designated a Cryptological Warfare Officer and will be assigned to National Security Agency Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Alamar Alonzo is a graduate of the University of Puerto Rico at Bayamont. Ensign Austin has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LPD-28 Fort Lauderdale in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Austin is a distinguished Naval graduate and a graduate of the College of William & Mary. Ensign Castle has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Castle has been awarded the Commander Jack Leavitt Leadership Award presented to the candidate chosen by their peers who most inspired her class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. Ensign Castle is a distinguished Naval graduate and a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Ensign Jones has been designated a Service Warfare Officer and will be assigned to DDG-97 Halsey in San Diego, California. Ensign Jones is a graduate of Thomas Edison State University. Ensign Cook has been designated a Service Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LPD-21 New York in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Cook is a graduate of Tuskegee University. Ensign Kitchener has been designated a Service Warfare Officer, Nuclear, and will be assigned to DDG-60 Paul Hamilton in San Diego, California. Ensign Kitchener is a graduate of Oregon State University. Ensign Bodenschatz has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bodenschatz is a graduate of the University of Cincinnati. Ensign Vargas has been designated a Service Warfare Officer and will be assigned to CG-69 Vicksburg in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Vargas is a graduate of St. Leo University. Ensign Minchow has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 5 in Port Wyneme, California. Ensign Minchow is a graduate of Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. Ensign Brahalba has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer and be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Brahalba is a graduate of Texas Tech University. Ensign Brown has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Brown is a graduate of Texas Tech University. Ensign Bowan has been designated a Service Warfare Officer, Nuclear, and will be assigned to DDG-95 James E. Williams in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Bowan is a graduate of Northern Illinois University. Ensign Cable has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Cable is a graduate of the University of Washington. Ensign Claflin has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Claflin is a graduate of The Ohio State University. Ensign Coates has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Coates is a graduate of the University of Oklahoma. Ensign Don has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Don is a graduate of Penn State University. Ensign Dean has been designated an Information Professional Officer and will be assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Dean is a graduate of Syracuse University. Ensign Demas has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and has been assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 1 in Gulfport, Mississippi. Ensign Demas is a graduate of the University of Southern California. Ensign Donaldson has been designated a Cryptological Warfare Officer and be assigned to Navy Information Operations Command, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, Hawaii. Ensign Donaldson is a distinguished Naval graduate and a graduate of Colgate University. Ensign Fusco has been designated a Cryptological Warfare Officer and be assigned to National Security Agency Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Fusco is a graduate of the College of the Holy Cross. Ensign Gatos has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Gatos is a graduate of Robert Morris University. Ensign Groh has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Groh is a graduate of the University of South Florida. Ensign Hawkins has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hawkins is a graduate of Middle Georgia State University. Ensign Hazard has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hazard is a graduate of the University of Nebraska. Ensign Hearns has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hearns is a graduate of Trinity College University of Dublin.
Ensign Hernandez has been designated a student naval aviator and be assigned to naval instructory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Hernandez is a graduate of St. Leo University. Ensign Hostetler has been designated a submarine warfare officer to be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Hostetler is a distinguished naval graduate and a graduate of Arizona State University. Ensign James has been designated a student naval aviator and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign James is a graduate of Miami University. Ensign Harrige has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps officer and will be assigned to Public Works Department in Great Lakes, Chicago. Ensign Harrige is a graduate of the University of Illinois at Chicago. Ensign Johnston has been designated a Service Warfare Officer and be assigned to LHD-1 WASP in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Johnston is a graduate of Columbia University. Ensign Kamara has been designated a Service Warfare Officer and will be assigned to CG-59 Princeton in San Diego, California. Ensign Kamara is a graduate of Medgar Evers College. Ensign Kern has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Kern is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Ensign Kesner has been designated a student naval aviator and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Kesner is a graduate of the University of Cincinnati. Ensign Kobashigawa has been designated an Information Professional Officer and be assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Kobashigawa is a distinguished naval graduate and a graduate of the University of Hawaii. Ensign Khan has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Khan is a graduate of Clemson University. Ensign Langham has been designated a Service Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LHD-5 Baton in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Langham is a graduate of Old Dominion University. Ensign Lay has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer and will be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Lay is a graduate of the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Ensign Magales has been designated a Supply Corps Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Magales is a graduate of the University of South Carolina. Ensign Marshman has been designated a student naval aviator and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Marshman is a graduate of the University of Central Florida. Ensign Marchinsky has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Marchinsky is a graduate of Montana State University. Ensign Matthews has been designated a Naval Flight Officer and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Matthews is a graduate of Northern Illinois University. Ms. McCloskey has been designated a student naval aviator and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ms. McCloskey is a graduate of Kent State University. Ms. McDougall has been designated a student naval flight officer and be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ms. McDougall is a graduate of the University of Mississippi. Ms. Medina has been designated a service warfare officer and be assigned to LSD-52 Pearl Harbor in San Diego, California. Ms. Medina is a graduate of California State University, Long Beach. Ensign Meffert has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Meffert is a graduate of the University of Akron. Ensign Milson has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Milson has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas E.D. Honor Award for obtaining the highest average for academics, military training, and physical fitness at Officer Candidate School in honor of Lieutenant Thomas E.D. United States Navy Congressional Medal of Honor awardee. Ms. Milson is a distinguished naval graduate and a graduate of the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Ms. Montalvo has been designated a service warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG-76 Higgins in Yokosuka, Japan. Ms. Montalvo is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Ms. Narlock has been designated a special warfare officer and will be assigned to Naval Special Warfare Center in San Diego, California. Ms. Narlock is a graduate of Georgetown University. Ms. Newton has been designated a student naval aviator will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Newton is a graduate of Brandman University. Ensign Prada has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps Officer will be assigned to Public Works Department, Indian Head, Maryland. Ensign Prada has been awarded the Chapel Clarity United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending Officer Candidate School. Ensign Prada is a distinguished Naval graduate and a graduate of Stephen F. Austin State University. Ensign Paul has been designated a Student Naval Aviator will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Paul is a graduate of the College of the Holy Cross. Ensign Pierce has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Pierce is a graduate of Auburn University. Ensign Pizarro has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Pizarro is a graduate of California State University, Monterey Bay. Ensign Kwan has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer 
be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Kwan is a graduate of the University of Tulsa. Ensign Quijano has been designated a submarine warfare officer, to be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Quijano is a graduate of the University of California, Irvine. Ensign Romano has been designated a cryptological warfare officer, to be assigned to National Security Agency, Central Security Service in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Romano has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Academics Award for obtaining the highest average in academics while attending officer candidate school. Ensign Romano is a graduate of the University of Texas at Austin. Ensign Rowe has been designated a Supply Corps officer, will be assigned to Naval Supply School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Rowe is a graduate of Bethune-Cookman University. Ensign Shaning has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer, will be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Shaning is a graduate of Oregon State University. Ensign Scambati has been designated an Intelligence Officer, will be assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Scambati is a graduate of Coastal Carolina University. Ensign Sheehan has been designated a Service Warfare Officer, will be assigned to DDG-72 Mahan in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Ensign Sheehan is a graduate of Simpson College. Ensign Sonnefeld has been designated a Student Naval Aviator, will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Sonnefeld is a graduate of The Ohio State University. Ensign Spidell has been designated a Student Naval Aviator, will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Spidell is a graduate of the University of South Alabama. Ensign Tewksbury has been designated a Service Warfare Officer, will be assigned to DDG-56 John S. McCain in Everett, Washington. Ensign Tewksbury is a graduate of Liberty University. Ensign Brightman has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Brightman is a graduate of Old Dominion University. Ensign Walston has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Instructory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Walston is a graduate of The Ohio State University. Ensign Wolfram has been designated a Service Warfare Officer, will be assigned to DDG-59 Russell in San Diego, California. Ensign Wolfram is a graduate of Post University. Ensign Youngblood has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer, will be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Youngblood is a graduate of Auburn University. Ensign Walker has been designated a Submarine Warfare Officer, will be assigned to Naval Nuclear Power Training Command in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Walker is a graduate of the University of Nevada, Reno. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo.
On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the graduation ceremony. Please remember the only authorized visitor locations are Nimitz Field and K Hall.